Hello there, how's it going? Um, before I start the video proper, I thought I'd give out a, a fair warning. Um, I will in this video be touching on the subject of uh, abuse and suicide. And it's kind of only a surface level thing, I don't go deeply into it at all, but it's there. So I thought I'd, uh, you know, just give that warning just in case. Um, also, I will be saying a certain swear word an awful lot. You can guess which one from the uh, from the title of the video. Uh, but if you've got kids and you don't want them to be saying that word over and over afterwards, uh, you might want to be skipping this one, okay? Uh, anyway, thank you very much. Let's get on with it. I don't know how well known he is outside of the UK, but inside of the UK, uh, Adrian Edmondson is a bit of a comedy legend. Um, these days you can see him in the long-running, miserable English soap opera EastEnders, and little indie films that no one has ever heard of. Uh, but he originally rose to fame in the early 1980s, playing the violent punk rock student Vivian in The Young Ones. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Missed both my legs! Shut up! Uh, and then alongside his friend and fellow Young Ones actor Rick Mail as the violent 20-something Eddie Hitler in the early 90s show Bottom. Um, but what did he do in between? Well, plenty as it turns out. Uh, but one thing Edmondson did was write a book, a guide of sorts, uh, released in 1986 called How to Be a Complete Bastard, along with uh, a game uh, by the same name published by Virgin Games the following year for the home microcomputers at the time. Um, that's the ZX Spectrum. Amstrad CPC-464 and uh, Commodore 64 to be precise. I'll be looking at the Spectrum version today though, as it's the one I actually own and the one I played back then. First though, let's tackle the book, co-written by Mark Lee and Mike Lepine, and written from the perspective of, of Edmondson himself, uh, a better than exaggerated, bastardly version. The character is reportedly based on Vivian, uh, but I see an amalgamation of Richie and Eddie from Bottom there as well. Uh, what it means though is that if you're familiar with the young ones and Bottom, you'll know exactly what to expect from this book. It's pure 80s lad comedy, uh, back when it was still funny to laugh at incels like R Richie and Eddie uh, because they weren't called incels and they didn't congregate on the internet and egg each other into spree shootings. Uh, that got dark quickly. Anyway, <clears throat> the book relative to that is uh, much lighter in tone. Like the Beano had decided to write a, a Dennis the Menace story for adults with lots of swearing and bodily functions thrown in. Indeed, the book takes you through bastarding at school, through to being a complete bastard at college, how to, how to be a sexist bastard to feminists, how to be a bastard to the deaf, how to drive like a bastard, and so on and so on. It's actually pretty tame by today's standards. It was probably tame by 80s standards uh, as well, to truth be told. And look, I know people need absolutely no help being shitty people, and it's, it's joking about actually abusing people. Uh, but I will say that at least the joke is at the expense of the bastard. He is a sad loser, and while I suppose other sad losers may see him as someone to emulate, um, the bastard is otherwise the subject of the mockery. Although having said all that, not to be one of those people that gives lame, well, it was a different time, excuses, of course, but it's it's worth bearing in mind that this book is very much a product of the 80s, and some of the stuff in here is very much problematic. In particular, there's a section about working at the Samaritans with the aim of getting the callers to commit suicide. There's someone who has lost a friend to suicide, and indeed, as someone with a working sense of empathy, it made me sharply inhale and say, Bloody hell. There's also a page entitled How to Hold Your Own Kamikaze Death Squadron Rally, which I'm not going to show, because it's so racist I'm afraid my video would get taken down. But for all the outdated parts, the book also represents a part of the 80s that rings true today. Um, the UK of the early 80s was, like the rest of the world, going through a depression. But it hit the UK particularly hard, and in 1986, when the book was first printed, unemployment was somewhere above 3 million. 
we had seen riots and the famous miner strike, which was eventually crushed by Maggie Thatcher and the seemingly uncaring Conservative government. It was not a good time to be poor, and there was a lot of resentment towards the rich. To be edgy back then meant lashing out at everybody, but class was a large part of it. To be anti-government and anti-wealth. This finally brings us to the game, where you of course play as Adrian, complete bastard Edmondson himself. You see, the bastard is a working class bastard, who has gone and crashed a yuppie party on the posh side of town. Oh, uh, a yuppie, in case any of you are too young to have encountered this term before, meant young urban professional. Young people with money and good jobs. Stereotypically, but not exclusively, white, privileged and arrogant. Patrick Bateman from American Psycho is the ultimate yuppie although the average yuppie wasn't a serial killer. Well, at least I, I don't think they were. Anywho, it's the disdain and distrust of the rich and middle slash upper classes that comes through in this book that is the entire basis of the game. Aid has crashed this yuppie party and is determined to be such a bastard to everyone that they leave and he has the place to himself. Uh, this is achieved by rooting around the house for items to use uh, earning bastard points and lighting up all the letters in complete bastard in the process. Uh, but what's going on with this play area, I don't hear you ask. Uh, well, for some reason, the developers' sentient software decided the best way to represent a room in two dimensions uh, would be to split the view in two, with one view showing the y-axis and the other showing the x-axis. So that means you see the bastard and the guests walking around the room on both views and you've got to kind of figure out where you are in the room from that. It's an absolute bugger to get used to at first, uh, but you, uh, you kind of do. It never stops being awkward when trying to line yourself up with people and objects though. Uh, a simple top-down view would have been much better. Maybe sentient thought a side-on view would give the game more character. Well, they failed if that was the case with their mannequin-like sprites, but you know, never mind. So, we've got drunk and smelly meters either side of the play area, along with wee and fart meters uh, along the bottom. These are surprisingly important rather than just a, a cheap joke. Well, you, you know, they are cheap jokes as well, but you, you get what I mean. Um, the wee and fart meters are the simplest when full. Either go for a wee in the toilet and lose points in the process. Or if you actually want to be a bastard, your warm stream is better directed towards the nearest plant or sink. Uh, and then the F key farts and raises your stink meter. Uh, need I explain that bit further? The drunk meter is the one you want to be paying attention to though. Uh, the actions you as aid can perform depend on just how drunk he is. And the game gives no clue as to what actions there are and how drunk you have to be to do them. If you're not at the right level of drunkenness, the option to say, set furniture on fire with matches, just doesn't appear. And getting too drunk makes the top half of your view go all squiffy, so don't do that. And that's the game, you walk around the house and grab items, uh, and experiment on other items, furniture, and people until you find things to do. Grab a blanket and pretend to be a ghost, for the condom with coleslaw. Nail someone's feet to the floor. Remove the carpet tacks from the carpet on the stairs, and, and so on and so on. To add to the difficulty, the letters you light up along the bottom there will eventually go out. And so you've got to be fairly quick once you start the bastard ball rolling. Not to mention there are actions that will harm you. In fact, they'll usually outright kill you. Game over at that point, obviously. Uh, like farting in the kitchen will result in a deadly explosion. Or, less fatally, you might get turned into an oven by opening an umbrella indoors. Or, in the ultimate being a bastard to the player move, if you find the computer in one of the bedrooms and choose to reset it, it actually resets your, your actual computer, which in the days of waiting 5-10 to 10 minutes for the game to load off of a, a cassette is such a brilliant FU. Ultimately though, it's all trial and error. And it can be frustrating trying to figure out what does what, whether you need to be sober or half cut and not dying in the process, and doing it all quickly enough to keep those letters lit. The shock humour is toned down in the game compared to the book as well, with the humour being all wee farts and smashy smashy, 
and you don't see anything at all. It's, it's all in the text descriptions. There's no animation on the main screen to show the actions being taken. Everyone stands straight and stiff the entire time. Not even the good type of stiff, the boring type of stiff. It is perhaps then not all that surprising that how to be a complete bastard is largely forgotten. I'm happy to have the game and book in my collection. It's like this fairly interesting missing link between the young ones and bottom. And the book, at least, was popular enough to spawn a follow-up named The Complete Bastard's Book of the Worst, uh, and along with Mark Lee and Mark Lepine, returning to co-write a spin-off with Pamela Stevenson called How to Be a Complete Bitch. Equality! And that's, uh, that is basically it. Worth checking out, maybe, if you're a fan of Adrian Edmondson? Probably not, if you're not. Don't go in expecting something super offensive and subversive and you're, you're golden, you complete bastard. Alright, well, thanks for watching this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to like it. Subscribe, of course, if you want. I've also got a Twitter account that I use far too much. And I've started streaming on Twitch as well. So maybe check those out. But, you know, whatever you choose to do. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you next time. Bye.